advertising is great. It's a phenomenal industry full of amazing, wonderful people. But this week, I need a break, and that's no offense to any of you listening. It's just how it is. So this week, I break the mold and have on somebody for the first time outside the industry. We have a great friend of mine, Peter Criticos. He's about seven months in at IBM as a client services representative. Knowing Peter in college was quite interesting. He's a funny guy that is always willing to lend a hand and helps me a lot out still today. You can go to him for resume, cover letter, and LinkedIn advice at any time, and he always comes through with valuable and pragmatic solutions. Last week, I actually went to him asking for advice on how to succeed in the virtual workplace. It was so good, I asked him to come on this episode and give advice to our listeners. So that's what we do. We talk about how to succeed in the virtual workplace, whether you're starting your career out or you're senior management. Keep listening to learn how to thrive and better your work productivity while staying sane. And if you like what you hear and want to connect with Peter, which you should, head to our Instagram, entering ad. You can see his recommended resources as well. And now, this is the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast, and I am your accomplice, Gino Schellenberger. Kick it, Mikey. Peter Criticos, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. What is up, my man? What is up, Gino? It's so good to be here. You know, I know this is an advertising podcast, but today we're let's let's not call it that. Let's keep it a it's a professional podcast today. How about that? I like that. I like that. And why Peter says that is because he's not in advertising. A very first episode where we do not feature an advertising guest. Peter works at International Business Machine. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, International Business Machines. I love calling it that to throw people off, but um most of you probably know it's just it's called IBM. So one of the largest tech companies in the world. But um, just want to start by saying thanks, Gino, for having me on. Uh, it, it's it's great to be on this podcast. I know you pull up, put a lot of work into it. So Thank uh, thanks for having me here and excited to get get going with the show. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so how this is going to work uh, for listeners out there probably tuning in because they're big fans of you. Uh, originally, this is a advertising podcast how to break into the advertising industry but this episode we're really going to hone in on how to succeed in the virtual workplace and you've been in now for a couple months six months i would say six seven months at ibm Is that mm -hmm. right? yeah so i started in august um mm -hmm. and i guess i'd make it around like six months six month mark right now so yep yep and i and i've come to you a lot in in college for like because we were buddies in college, uh, I would come to you for advice, like with networking and for like business etiquette and, you know, just like help with projects and all that. We're good friends. So I came to him about a week ago asking advice for my own as a mentor in my own personal career. I came to you asking, like, what are the basic tools, uh, the do's and do nots when, you know, starting your job in the virtual world? If you don't have a job yet, you could this could apply to internships. This can apply later down the line. It's good stuff to know while these virtual uh, workplaces might be in effect for a while now. So that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get into you, you have a list of advice, Peter. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your role real quick at IBM. Are you sales? Are you uh, supply chain uh, management? Like, what do you do there? Right. So there's a lot going on at IBM. I'm in sales at IBM right now. So I'm doing technology sales. I think uh, it's, it's cool because coming out of business school, it's I, I majored in finance at U of I. Um, and like Gino said, we went to school together. But coming out of business school, it's definitely not the traditional path you would go down. Uh, leaving business school, you'd usually go to maybe a consulting firm. You'd go to a bank and work there, as many of my friends do. It's going to um, working in corporate finance or accounting. So I just kind of knew early on that that wasn't really going to work for me going down one of those traditional paths. I think that one thing that's cool about sales is you get to talk to people and you get to have a job where not 
any day is like the last day you had. So that's what's cool about it for me. I will say working in tech sales specifically, I, I like to joke with my friends. I think it's the sexiest job of the 21st century working in tech technology sales. Gina, what do you think? How does that make you feel? I like that. I, yeah. I think it's time to switch over. You might convert my audience over to tech sales now. Yeah. I think it's cool. You're you're working on the cutting edge. You're working with cool technology and really holding a lot of these major companies' hands as they're moving from kind of like their legacy systems into more modern type uh, applications. So it's cool stuff. Um, I enjoy working with people and Everything's been a blast so far, even though it's been from the virtual setting. So um, yeah. definitely excited to be here and give some advice. Yeah. And I, I'm sure there are some advertising majors or people that are maybe not advertising majors that are interested in the sales route that are listening. So definitely something to look into. Does IBM have an internship program or something that they do in the summer for those that are trying to break into that industry? Yeah. So with IBM, you're going to uh, for their sales program, it's called the summit program. And there's an internship as well as a full-time role. And it's pretty much widely known as, um, one of the top sales programs, uh, out of any company. And it, they, they do really invest a lot into their employees. It's super cool to, to be going through it because they don't really just throw you out there and say, Hey, here's your list of accounts. Here's, uh, your territory. You're on a quota. Like, meet your numbers or you're getting whacked. It's not, it's not like that at all. It's, they really, they really give you the training and, um, the program I'm in is six months long for training. So I actually just finished up the training program. Nice. And a lot of the people say it's like, it's like getting your MBA in sales is what, um, it's known around the industry. So it's pretty yeah. cool to, to have gone through that. It's cool. And I, those types of programs, if anybody, you know, if you're, if you're on the job search or the internship, if you find a program that's like an immersion program or a rotational or a summit program, those are a pretty good indicator that the company is willing to invest in you and cares about you and will help you succeed. So, and obviously you've been doing very well in your role, um, you know, and now it's time to like, let's just get right into it. Let's get yeah. into the advice because, you know, People are going to hopefully be starting their internship soon or they're starting the, the sales cycle or the, the hiring cycle, I should say, for advertising is starting to pick up now, too. So people mm -hmm. are getting their jobs. And Peter, you've been there. So you have a list of advice for us. I'm going to give you the microphone and you can take this any way you want. But right. like you're talking to me, how should like what's the big go to things that we need to follow? OK, so I want to start with pieces of advice that. And this, this is kind of the cheesy thing you might see on a LinkedIn post, like 10 things that take zero talent. So I want to kind of go that route. Like these are the things you can do that take absolutely no skill, like no skill. It's just things you can do to prepare yourself well for working in the, the virtual environment. So yes. the first thing I'm going to start with is just look, look at where I am right now. Like take a look at my background. There's, it's a nice background. There's some symmetry to it the lighting's well. And I think those are like the foundational pieces of, of you're going to be on Zoom every day. You're going to be on your whatever it is, Google Hangouts, uh, Microsoft Teams. And um, whether uh, a lot of the times your camera's going to be on too. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get to that too. But I think the first thing is having a nice background really shows you care. And, and even down to what you're wearing too, like it's going to depend whether you're in a meeting with your boss or like whether you're in a meeting with just your peers. But I think a lot of that, like your background and what you're wearing says a lot about you. Um, mm -hmm. So I would, I would uh, kind of gear towards on the safer side, maybe if you can make it look a little bit nicer or even just play it safe with like a plain wall. Um, mm -hmm. And right now you got two posters behind you. One's like a cool old retro IBM poster. I can't really make out what the other one is. It might look like an article or, an, or a newspaper ad yeah. of IBM. So really cool. It looks really great. And you're wearing a tuxedo. It's crazy you're wearing a tuxedo right now for this interview, but it works. Yeah, I rented this thing. So I got to return it by in the morning tomorrow. So yeah, no, um, yeah, I got, nice. a, I got some old retro stuff behind me. The, the one is, that's actually a news clipping from like one of the first IBM personal computers. Um, but moving on, I, I, I think this kind of goes with th 
things that you can't really like don't really take much time mm -hmm. uh, i think one thing you can do is kind of separate your workspace from your personal space so if you are in a room um, where you're sleeping try your best and i know it depends on whatever situation uh you, you get into but um try your best to make your desk or like your office space somewhere that might not be right next to your bed, maybe in the other room, maybe in your basement, somewhere where you can walk in there and say, I'm at work right now and get into that work mindset instead of getting into um, kind of a, a mesh mishmash of like, am I at work? Am I in my personal room right now? I think that's where it gets kind of dicey and you can start going a little crazy that way. Yeah, it's nice if you have that luxury. Um, I personally do not, but if you can separate it, that's got to be huge. Yeah, in any way you can. And Gino, if you don't have that luxury, one thing I will quickly say is I think it's it, it's important to, during the day, maybe like get outside and go for a walk. So, so at the office, if you work downtown, so I interned at IBM before I, I took the full-time job. So I know what it's like going into the office every day. Mm -hmm. And you do get outside, like you go for a coffee with your coworker, you, you go grab lunch, you go do these things outside. And I think we kind of miss out on that or forget about that in the virtual space, um, just because you're at your own desk all day. So just remember, like, if you're kind of in your room and you feel like cooped up, remember to get outside and go for a walk. Um, and mm -hmm. just kind of do breathe a little bit, yes. take your mind off things. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Nice. And I, I will quickly say one last piece about kind of like the office type area before we move on. Um, I know a lot of companies nowadays are kind of given like a yearly like or quarterly credit. So maybe my company gave us a certain amount of money to spend on maybe getting like a mouse or like a monitor or stuff like that. So mm -hmm. if you're in that situation where you just got a job at a new company, definitely look into those types of things because you can kind of forget about those things. Nice. But yeah, um, I'll move on. Um, I want to talk about something that really worked out well for me um, in, in the workspace. Um, it's kind of hard because you really, you walk that line from not really knowing people that you're actually working with and kind of get that like black mirror vibe. Like, do I really know you? Like what's going on here? So, oh yeah, I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you should really try your best to take a vested interest in people that you work with. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is maybe you talk business, you have a meeting, you talk whatever the project you're doing for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but maybe like the last five minutes of that meeting, try to actually get to know that person or schedule a separate meeting just to like talk to them on a person to person level, because that's what you'd be doing in the office, right? Like, You'd be shooting the breeze with someone. You'd be getting to know them. Like, how are your kids? Like, mm -hmm. what's going on? Like, where'd you go to college? Just these basic things that obviously are like, duh, a no brainer. But you kind of get lost in translation like that. You, you don't have like that water cooler, like I don't mm -hmm. know, the virtual. And everybody talks about that. But you said even when we talked, you said it was like even more important, like the people, obviously like managers and all that and, and who you're reporting to. But it, it's also very important to try to connect with those people on the same page as you same level whether it's right. like on the same team or other teams like that it's really crucial to f to form a strong bond with those people because those are your, those are your troops like those are the people that you got to rely on that will help you out and you got you got each other's back oh 100 percent. i mean it's easy to feel alone when you're you are alone and i think you need to make a make a concerted effort to build those relationships i think even another thing I would say is go, go even far as, as far as to even like have a work buddy. Um, that's worked out well for me. Um, I actually met someone through the internship program who took it full time with me. And even though we're not in the same geographic location, we kind of, we're, we're always bouncing questions off each other mm -hmm. and really going through the process together. So having like a work buddy is great. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to Bailey. She's, she's my work buddy. I told her I was going on a podcast and, that I'd shout her out. So there, there it go. is. Um, and then another cool thing, like I know it's COVID, it's a pandemic, but you can like actually like meet up with people if you're comfortable, like outside and in the, in the outside setting, like 
I had a really fun time. We did like a Chicago meetup for like the people and we all just like hung out in a park. I, nice. I, that was like a fun time. So it's good. Yeah. It's good little things like that to like actually meet people. We got a buddy, Jack Westercamp, that likes he's pretty close with his work buddies. They go out and um, I don't know what they're doing, but they, they they have a really good friendship outside of the workplace, which is really nice. Yeah, so that Red Hawks was one of the, <laughs> his buddies' nicknames. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I heard they like went golfing or something. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what else we got? I mean, so creating those connections, uh, you know, you know, even starting with your own room, like where are you like your setting, like you're inside your house, like making mm-hmm. sure that all looks good and you're all prepared. And just so you feel good, you work good uh, and then contributing as much as you can and then creating those great relationships as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Where else are we steering here? You said 10 things that require zero talent. What, <laughs> what other what other uh, zero talent items do you have for, for because these are great. Right. Um, some zero talent stuff, I will say, um, kind of one of the big parts about work is like you, you'll get to work and you'll have, it'll kind of like start to look like a class schedule. Like you got meetings coming up and you're like looking at your calendar, right? Mm-hmm. So calendar management becomes a huge part of your everyday. Like what's my calendar like looking like from a day to day experience and pro tip that someone gave me um early on in my virtual setting was was saying don't be afraid to block time off on your calendar like just for yourself like even if you don't have a meeting with anyone or like it's just you on the list like you can just block off like an hour to a time just to like do what you need to do so no one else is kind of like plugging into your time. Get what I'm saying? Ah, that's smart. Yeah, because I remember at one of my internships, it was just full of meetings and they would like overlap with each other as an intern, as an intern. So I can I can only imagine what you're up to now. So scheduling what, like 30 minutes? Like you're not taking three hours. You're, I <laughs> right. mean, 30 no, minutes you're there for like to eat and maybe catch up on some projects, right? Right, yeah. I, I think it's it depends what you're up to right now. So like, one of the things that um, I think is a good tip too is like always keeping your skills sharp. So if that's like an hour just to like be watching videos and like learning and a lot of companies have like internal learning software where you're like, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, have you ever seen like the LinkedIn learning stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. And it's just like take an hour and just like do that and like keep your skills sharp. And that's another tip I would say. But going back to like the calendar management stuff, like block off time on your calendar to have to yourself. But then at the same time, don't be afraid to reach out and ask people um, for, you know, maybe like a short 15 minutes or a short 30 minutes to really get get uh, some of their perspective. And I know I was telling you this earlier and um. I didn't know if you wanted to get into this, but it was more of like the mentorship aspect of. Oh yeah, of, they people want to hear that. Yeah, for sure. Of working, so um, one of the things I've made it an effort to do is have like multiple mentors throughout the process. Um, I was lucky enough that like my program actually matched me up with a mentor mm-hmm. who was who was someone who was kind of like had just gone through I went what I went through. Mm-hmm. So that's always good to have a mentor like that who's like maybe a f- like six months a year ahead of what you're sure. doing yeah. and then they can kind of give you like the the view and they can give it to you straight and give it to you real but then i also think it's important to have a mentor who's maybe you know like a career ibm or or a career um who know what's an ad company um a career ddb or yep. like someone who has been through what you went through, but it's also had career experience, they can more shift and guide your career to, to maybe where you want to go. And that could be someone that you see yourself being like in Mm -hmm. however much down the line. There's a, there's a term, a type of mentor, kind of in that category called a sponsor, right? Now Mm -hmm. the sponsor is, and let me know if you have one of these, I'm curious, a sponsor is somebody that can, that has that decision-making power or very close to it to get you promoted 
or to another level to expand your career and grow it. So a sponsor is somebody that you want to keep in your circle that has that power or that, that influence to, to raise you up. Yeah, definitely. And I think one thing you can do with both of these types of mentors is have like an every other week interval where, where you make sure to schedule time with them Yeah, and kind of like check, check in with them on a regular basis. And even just, you don't have to always talk business, just talk about whatever you want. Maybe ask them things that you might be afraid to ask, like your, your real manager or something Mm -hmm. like that. So, um, I have someone like that who's, uh, blessed enough to be like a family friend and they are at IBM and such, such a good resource right now. So nice. Yeah. I mean, and and from your experience, I I feel like people are willing to help, right? If you reach out to them and you show a little bit of vulnerability, but promise like who's going to say no to somebody that's Mm -hmm. working hard and wants to succeed. Yeah. I think like more often than not, these are the type of people that were mentored by someone themselves. So more than anything, they just want to give back and do the same thing. Yeah. But yeah. I will say always one of this, I wrote this down. I will say, never forget to say thank you to these people because they don't have to be doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, you can kind of like take it for granted. So I always try to make sure to show my appreciation when I can through email or whatever it be. I like that. Over appreciate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So this is kind of a goofy one that I have here. Yeah. And this yeah. is this is moving on from like, this is more like technical stuff. So yeah, I yeah. got, I was on a project and um, it was just like a bunch of like data, like people's names, um, like what company there, it was like, just like a huge sheet. And like, I was like told to organize it in like a meaningful way. And I just like had no clue how pivot tables worked in Excel, which I feel like I should have, like as a finance major, I should definitely be more proficient in Excel than I am, but I was having trouble with that. So my next piece of advice is learn pivot tables, but also my next piece of advice is to have someone like have a friend at another company or someone that's uh, like willing to take like a few minutes and kind of walk you through that. You want to give them a shout out? Yeah. So listening. Um, so, uh, shout, shout out to Pat Kenny. Um, he's like my guru. He's Pat like, Kenny. My, yep. Pat yeah. Kenny. Gotcha. He's like, he's like my guru, like my guy. So I'll like go to him for like stuff like that. Like in the middle of the work day, we'll like hop mm-hmm. on like a separate, like Microsoft teams call or something. And mm-hmm. he's kind of like walk me through stuff like that. Cause, yeah. um, he's better at that than me, but yeah, I like that. My my advice there is leverage friends at other companies. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And um, I'm going to be doing that with Excel stuff too. So it's okay. Yeah. yeah, no, I know. So it's not maybe me being in sales and you being in advertising, like might have some correlation with that, but mm-hmm. we'll, we'll find our way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Any other goofy ones like that? Um, ooh, I'll, uh, I'll go with this one. Like this one's kind of another like cheesy, cheesier one, but I, I guess I'd say like you're in the, you're, you're working virtually. I would say take some risks. That's, that's my advice. Like you're, you're kind of like, you want to stand out um, like throughout this process. And I'm the type of person who I really rely on my personality to stand out. So when everything went virtual, I was like, Oh God, like my people Mm -hmm. skills is like the one thing that I'm good at. So like, how am I going to like stand out? So I think one thing, there's a few things you can do. So like, I'd say take risks. So like if your uh, manager maybe asks you to do a project or like do extra work, I'd say, say yes, more than, more than you say no, because a lot of the times that'll turn out into something great. Like I'm in sales right now at IBM. I accepted a, like a side project with the marketing department. It turned out amazing. Like it turned out, like I love doing like this marketing stuff. And it was just like a cool thing that like opened my eye to like, Hey, like, maybe I'll like one day down the line, like, like doing marketing stuff. It was just like, it was one of those cool things that I kind of never thought uh, would really happen unless I said yes to that. I like that. Uh, yeah, another risk I took, I uh, I said yes to working in 
a part of IBM that's actually currently becoming its own company. And I think okay. that's, that's something that's really cool because um, I'm going to get some experience working from like the ground floor of a new company and whatever happens to you and your journey, I'd say that saying yes and get, you'll, you'll often be rewarded for the risks you take rather than punished. And you'll learn, you'll, you'll learn a lot and you'll grow and you might discover something else that you like, like marketing or um, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Um, I want to, you told me, um, uh, what was the advice? Like get in front of managers early and often. Right. And that oh, one, yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought that one was really cool. So explain to the audience what you meant by like getting your work in front of managers or, or how you did it. Yeah, I think, uh, so one thing with that is like, if you actually put like time and effort and you take ownership over a project that you do and get a little creative with it, I think that that goes a long way. So what the story I was telling you about was how, um, me and one of my coworkers put together a presentation and, um, our presentation was something that like really appealed to our team to the point where it like kind of like kept getting bumped up to like higher and higher people. And I think that that was um, just like really cool and like rewarding to see something that's like your kind of like brainchild kind of move up the ranks like that. Um, another thing I'll say, get try to get work in front of managers, try to get in front of the client if you can too. So um, a lot of the people in advertising and of course me in sales, it's, it's a client facing position. So I know we're early in our career and you might not be trusted with that yet, but try your hardest to get in front of the client, which is something I'm still working on. I like too. that. I like that. And um, a lot of times, like with account manager rules, you're going to be interacting with the client. If you're at a, an agency that needs the help with that. And a lot of times I was talking to creatives, sometimes junior copywriters or like junior art directors or, or graphic designers, if they come up with the idea, and they're at these nimble creative shops, they will present it to the client. They're like, well, you came up with the idea, like go in the room and pitch it. Like that's gotta be incredible and terrifying at the same mm-hmm. time. So I like, I like that advice. And in our industry that happens quite a bit if, if the work is good and they own up to it and you, you stamp it on your, as your own. Mm-hmm. Before. Um, so I have like a last, like, cool piece of advice that I want to give, but I'll do, uh, I'll do just like one little one before I think. So one thing I will say is like an attitude thing, like be someone, you don't have to be perfect, but I'd say be someone that seeks out feedback. Um, and that always goes a really long way. So if you do something, be like, what could I have done differently? And it's sometimes it's hard to ask for feedback because a lot of the times, like you might not want to hear it or, yeah, something like that. But I think one of the things that my manager told me that really stuck with me was she was like, you always like ask for feedback and you always like acted upon it. And mm-hmm. even though like sometimes I drove her crazy, which like she did tell me like, there's, you know, sometimes you drive people crazy and like, it's just how you are. And like, but asking for feedback and like yeah. acting on that feedback and really, um, it, it comes full circle and it's, I think that's what like makes you a, a good employee and a good person to be around. It's huge. It's huge. And that's a skill, you know, to ask for feedback and expect realizing that people are giving you criticism for good. It's a good intent. They care about you when they want to help you grow. That's huge. Um, mm-hmm. All right. What are those? Um, You had some quick like hammer, like advice that you wanted to go through. Um. Or did you uh, like like just like the like the setup and like maybe what to invest in and like kind of quick pass? Oh, like gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so what what I was thinking there was like for me I, when I started, I was like scrambling, like trying to figure out what like bank account am I going to use, like what am I, how am I going to set up my four hundred one k, all this stuff. So yeah, a good thing to do, and I know Gino's already on this, but kind of set up like your personal finance structure or whatever you want to call it before you get in there yeah. and before yeah. you're like kind of like worried about getting started at the workplace. So like one thing you could do is like maybe set up your 
set up your savings account, know what you want to do with your 401k, like how much you want to start putting into your, your fund and stuff like that. And I yeah. think that goes a long way, like knowing that beforehand. Huge. Yeah. And the personal finance is subject untouched on this podcast, but super huge, right? That if you have like a week and you know that you're starting in a week or maybe two weeks, that is, that's a huge opportunity for you to get your shit together, right? Um, to get everything in order, to know, like, have an idea if you know how much you're getting paid to allocate, you know, what the pre-tax what and post-tax looks like for your accounts and where you want to allocate for your savings and your checkings. If you're doing the 401k, if you're doing an individual 401k, these are all things that you should, no matter what industry, you should have an idea and those percentages and how to get all that going. So huge, huge advice. My favorite one that I've been going pretty hard on now and I'm excited to get everything uh, put together because of money. Who doesn't love money? Right. That's why we're in this business, Gina. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I do this podcast, all the big bucks. <laughs> That's why yeah. they're paying you the big bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, anything else? Any quick other things like uh, uh, any like a sp special keyboard that you use that you invest in the more specific, the better any like equipment that you like at home that you want to shout out? Ooh, um, I'll shout out. I don't have them with me. I'll shout out. Um, definitely blue light glasses. I will shout them out because yeah. you will get a headache and want to wear them. Um, yeah. Other things, I'm basically like sponsored by this stuff. This is uh, Pure Leaf Lipton Black Tea. Yeah, and this sure, is like, sure. yeah. they uh, they actually, um, I, I was drinking like two cups a day of coffee during the internship and that's not good for you, right? So I tried to like transition more towards tea. They say it gives you like a more sustained, longer like attention and like energy boost. So. I'm kind of on the tea kick. So that's my specific thing. Start drinking like black tea. It's really good. Yeah, a lot of caffeine in that too. So good stuff. Well, Peter, we will finish that off with the tea advice. Uh, Kendra loves the tea too. One of <laughs> our good buddies. I have to give him a shout out. Uh, so if anybody wants to reach out to you, LinkedIn is the best way, I'm assuming. Or do you want to give it your Instagram? How do you want people to reach out to you if they have any other like questions on starting in the virtual world? No. Um, yeah. Connect with me on LinkedIn would be great. Or you could shoot me an email at pjkrit at gmail.com or just match with me on LinkedIn. Yeah. Cool. And we'll put that all in the bio. Go to our Instagram at entering ad on Instagram to follow Pete, see his recommended resources and his cool edited headshot by Buchan Zhang. Well, Pete, thank you very much. Thank you all for listening to this entire episode of the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this week's guest. Make sure you go and connect with them on LinkedIn. Tell them that Breaking and Entering sent you. Now, thank you to Mikey Malarkey, our audio technician, and Buchan Zhang, our creative director, as well as the student team from the Midnight Oil Agency at the University of Illinois. Can't do it without you all. Thank you very much. We will see you all next week with another amazing guest.